If you're looking for a quick fix because your watch is either running fast or slow, this is not the video for you. But if you've been servicing vintage watches for any length of time and you're not getting the results that you would like, this video is going to start building the base of knowledge that you need to be able to understand the adjusting and regulation process when servicing vintage movements. In order to be consistently successful at regulating watch movements, you as the watchmaker need to first understand the relationship between the hairspring and the regulator pins. So grab a notepad and let's dive into one of the most complex subjects in watch repair. Most new watchmakers are under the impression that regulating a watch is just a matter of moving the regulator arm towards the plus or minus symbols. That's because that's all they've ever seen, or they've had some minor success doing that. There will be instances where that's all you need to do. But in vintage watch repair, that's almost never the case. So let's start off with the flat hairspring. In order for a watch to keep accurate time, it needs to be the correct length and weight for the frequency that the movement was designed to run at. Frequency is also known as beats per hour or BPH for short. To find the correct length of a hairspring, a watchmaker uses a vibrating tool. Inside the vibrating tool, there is a balance wheel and a hairspring of a known value that acts as a control. This balance wheel is set up for a movement running at a frequency of 18,000 beats per hour. The end of the hairspring is held by a clip so that the hairspring and the balance wheel are suspended with the balance pivots resting on the glass directly above the control balance inside the tool. The spot on the hairspring that is held by this clamp is known as the counting spot. Remember this because you're going to be hearing it a lot. The two sets of balance wheels are set in a motion so that they rotate at the same time. Now, the point where the hairspring is actually held by the clip is slowly shortened until both balance wheels are synchronized together and are actually rotating in unison at the same speed. Now, when this is achieved, the point on the hairspring that's held by the clamp is known as the real counting spot. This is the sweet spot on the hairspring where theoretically at this spot, the rate should be very close to zero. Now, if the counting spot was moved to make the hairspring longer, the rate would lose time. And if the counting spot was moved in the other direction to make the hairspring shorter, the rate would gain time. Longer hairspring equals slower rates. Shorter hairsprings equals faster rates. Now, when we install the balance into a working movement, the real counting spot needs to be located on the terminal curve near the middle of that curve so that there's room on either side of it for adjustability. Now, the other thing that happens is the real counting spot changes its location on the terminal curve. Why it does this is a really complicated subject, but let me try to just summarize it for you. You may have noticed that when a hairspring is oscillating or breathing in and out, it does not wind and unwind concentrically. In other words, the spacing between the coils are not exactly equal on opposite sides of the hairspring. This is actually a natural fault of the hairspring caused by the pinning point where the hairspring bends and goes into the collet. This really tight bend changes the center of gravity of the hairspring, so it's slightly offset, which is why the hairspring appears to be slightly offset as it breathes in and out. This offset condition wasn't present when the hairspring was originally being vibrated, 
But now that it's in the movement and it's running flat, the real counting spot on the hairspring actually changes position a little bit because of its relationship to the hairspring's pinning point of the collet. In this new location is what will be referred to as the practical counting spot. So basically, it has a new sweet spot. With the balance now installed in the movement, we have this extra length of hairspring that extends beyond the counting point and attaches to the hairspring stud. When the movement is at rest, the active length of the hairspring now extends all the way to the hairspring stud. And because we know that the practical counting point on the terminal curve is the sweet spot for a zero rate, and because we need this extra length of hairspring for adjustments, if there was no control in the movement to be able to get us back to that sweet spot or the counting spot, the movement would only be able to run slow and lose time. And that, my friends, is where the regulator pins come into play. When regulating a watch, you set the regulator pins to the center of the regulator gauge, which should be right around the spot on the hairspring where the practical counting spot is. Now, when the hairspring is centered between the regulator pins, which must be straight and parallel to each other, and as the balance starts rotating and is operating at a low amplitude, the hairspring is barely opening and closing so that either it's not touching or it's just barely touching the regulator pins, but only for a very short period of time. At this point, the movement will run to its maximum loss because the active length of the hairspring still extends all the way to the stud block. Now, as the amplitude starts to increase, the balance wheel will start getting a larger and larger arc of rotation, which will cause the hairspring to slowly start breathing in and out further and further until it gets to the point where the hairspring starts touching the regulator pins for longer and longer periods of time. These longer and longer periods of contact between the hairspring and the regulator pins slowly starts moving the active length of the hairspring away from the hairspring stud and starts moving it closer and closer to the regulator pins. And as the active length of the hairspring starts moving away from the hairspring stud and getting closer and closer to the regulator pins, the rate starts speeding up the closer it gets to those regulator pins. So now the regulator pin is controlling the active length of the hairspring. If you move the pins closer to the hairspring stud, the, the rate will start slowing down. And when you move the pins away from the hairspring stud, the faster the rate becomes. So if the regulator pins now are controlling the active length of the hairspring, why not just start off with the hairspring resting tight on one of the regulator pins instead of worrying about it being in the center. Well, initially, this does change the active length of the hairspring. It will cause the loss of time to be less when the movement is running at a low amplitude. But as the amplitude starts to increase, the hairspring starts spending less time touching the regulator pin so that the regulator pin is no longer controlling the active length of the hairspring and starts moving the active length closer and closer to the hairspring stud again. And the loss of time or slower rates start to slowly increase. This problem is even compounded more when the movement goes 
into a vertical position where now the hairspring is being pulled down by the force of gravity. In the vertical position, if the hairspring is already sitting on a regulator pin, it makes it much harder for the balance to throw the hairspring up to the other regulator pin. So the hairspring spends more time off the regulator pin than it does touching it, which moves the active length of the hairspring closer towards the hairspring stud. And this will be different depending on the orientation of where the hairsprings are, whether they're up or to the side or underneath. So to summarize, with enough amplitude in a hairspring that is centered between the regulator pins, wherever those regulator pins are along the curve of the hairspring, that becomes the end of the hairspring or what's known as the active length of the hairspring. Under those conditions, if the regulator pins are sitting over the practical counting spot of the hairspring, the rate will be zero. If you move the regulator pins towards the hairspring stud, away from the practical counting spot, the movement starts losing time. And if you move the regulator pins towards the knee or the bend of the terminal curve of the hairspring, the hairspring becomes shorter and the rates get faster. I would encourage you to watch this video several times because the better you understand the concepts that we're going over now, the easier it's going to be to understand the concepts when we start talking about manipulating the regulator pins and watch adjustment. I mean, a good analogy would be, imagine trying to learn algebra if you have no knowledge of addition and subtraction. That's going to be pretty rough. So listen, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them. And as always, because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.